Hey guys, welcome to another video episode of Coin Sutra. And in the earlier part of this video series, I have shared unboxing video of Trezor, how to start using Trezor for the first time, like how to take backup of your seed key and all those things. So in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of how to start using Trezor Wallet, an overview of Trezor Wallet interface. And this will give you a great understanding of how to start using Trezor Wallet. So without further delay, let me quickly show you how to do that. So very first thing you need to do is you need to connect your Trezor hardware wallet and enter the pin which I've already shown you in the earlier videos. If you have not seen those videos, you can click on the link in the description and watch those videos. Well, so that's how the Trezor wallet interface is like. To use this, you can install a Chrome app or if you're not using Chrome browser, you're using any other browser, they also have something called Trezor Bridge. You can use that on your Mac, on your Linux and start using that to connect your Trezor hardware wallet with your device. So here is how the interface looks like. You can change between different wallets. So they support Bitcoin, Dash, Litecoin, Zcash, and Ethereum wallet. So let's go back to Bitcoin wallet. And the interesting thing is like when this happens, when you switch your wallet, there's nothing shown on the device LCD screen. However, this is a different case in the case of Legion Nano S. We'll do a comparison of Trezor and Legion Nano S in a separate video. So here is your Bitcoin wallet. You can click on receive and this is your fresh address. So the thing is like you can generate as many addresses as you want. And every time when you are receiving a new payment, you should use a different address. I mean, that's a great thing to do. That's basically to ensure improve your security. If you want to send a payment, you can click on send here. You can enter the address. You can enter the amount. Or you can also enter the amount in USD, which is very convenient. Let's say if you have to send Bitcoin worth $100 to somebody, you can actually enter the amount here. That saves a lot of time. You can also decide on the fees you want to pay. If the sender needs to receive the payment urgently, you can increase the fees to high. If you're transferring Bitcoin between your different wallets, you can go to low because it might take few hours in some weird days, but you will save a lot of money and make sure you enter the right address. When you click on send, you need to enter your pin code to confirm the transaction. Well, that's another level of security which you get only in the hardware wallet. And this is why a wallet like Trezor and Legion NOS is so popular. We will not discuss sign in verify. That's for another video. Now here is a few important thing. Click on this wrench icon over here and you can make some changes in the device. Like for example, you want to change the device name. Like right now I've used the name Coin Sutra. If I want to change it to Harsh, I can do that from here. You can also change your pin code if you want. You can see your total balance here. Account public key, uh, let's not deal with that right now. Now here's very important thing and this is like the fun stuff for those who like to customize their wallet. You can use your logo or your own picture as the image. So this is the image which will be shown when you start your Trezor wallet. I will do a video on this in the upcoming video series. But for now, let's just move ahead. The advanced part is very interesting. So if you want to reset your Trezor wallet, you can do that from here. At the end, you have this option of wipe device. Just use that and your Trezor is as good as new. Now, one very interesting feature in Trezor is the passphrase feature. Using this feature, you can make your Bitcoin more secure. So what it does is like, let's say apart from your seed key, you can also use a passphrase which will be used to access your Bitcoins. Now what you can do, you can create one passphrase and store your majority of your Bitcoin using that passphrase. And you can use second passphrase and you can store a tiny part of your Bitcoin using that passphrase. Now, how does it help? Let's say somebody is keeping a gun on your head and asking you to, you know, give your Bitcoin. In that case, you can give them the new passphrase. You don't give them the first passphrase and that's it. The person would never know that you have like so much Bitcoin and you stay more secure. Well, that's just to ensure extra security. You can also go to app settings and you can configure like what currency do you want to see? Let's say, let me see if they have INR. Oh, that's great. They have INR support. You can select currency backend. Like they support all other currency like Litecoin, Zcash, Ethereum, Bitcoin. And that's it. Let's just close this. Well, that's how you start using Trezor wallet and it's fairly easy. So if you have never used a hardware wallet, this is your time to order a hardware wallet. 
Fraser wallet is very easy to use. You can order it from the official site. I've added the link in the description. Use that link to make the purchase so that you buy it from the official site. And when you make a purchase, I'll also get a part commission. However, my review is nowhere influenced by the commission part. And I hope this video helped you to understand everything about Trezor Wallet. If you have any question, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, do share it with others. It might help them to learn more about keeping their Bitcoin secure. If you want to know more about Bitcoin wallets, how to keep your Bitcoin secure, do visit our website coinsutra.com and you will learn everything you need to know. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. This was your host, Harsha Grewal.